We're holding this seminar on leading programs and projects because we found that looking at the recommendations from a large number of our reports, there was a theme emerging that there was a need to strengthen the leadership of programs and projects. We decided therefore it would be worthwhile trying to share good practice that we picked up within Wales and also a lot of good practice from beyond Wales to help public bodies address these issues that we'd flagged up in our report. The reason we're focusing on leading programmes and projects is that what we found is that it's not all about the process. It's important that there is good, clear leadership, leadership that provides a direction, but also leadership that encourages people to be, feel enabled to participate in the project, to speak openly about what's working and what's not working. The right kind of leadership is critical to the success of a project, however good the processes are. There were probably a couple of messages I wanted to get across to, uh, to the conference delegates today. I think first of all I wanted to explain why the Major Projects Authority exists in the first place. So I talked about the National Audit Office report in 2010 that, that identified that two thirds of government projects fail, either in terms of, you know, don't hit the cost targets or the timescale targets, through things like uh, lack of central oversight, lack of delivery skills, uh, fearing to speak truth unto power in relation to not admitting when a project's going wrong. So that fairly powerful NAO report launched the Major Projects Authority in 2011. And I think the second main uh, theme of my presentation this morning was what the Major Projects Authority actually does uh, in relation to try and tackle those issues that, issues that were uh, uh, raised by the National Audit Office. So things like providing that independent central oversight so that we can go into the department, look at a project, find out what's going right, what's going wrong, and actually highlight those issues in a way that is honest and open and transparent, and we're not fearing giving bad news. I think secondly, what we're also looking to do quite crucially is improve the skills and capability of the civil service. So, uh, you know, improve project management skills, project leadership skills, and we're doing that through the Major Project Leadership Academy, which is aimed at the senior people within the civil service, and also the PLP, the Project Leadership Programme, which is aimed at those up-and-coming people coming through the system who will be the future SROs and leaders as well. Uh, and then also at the end, where we had the question and answer session, the more openness and transparency in project management and delivery, the more you're able to admit the problems are there and find the solutions to them. Well, the main thrust of my presentation, Ina, was to uh, it just articulate to people that actually it's not the methodology that will deliver successful projects. It's more about the people and the dynamics of the people and moulding a team, creating a vision and empowering people to uh, deliver the project. The one key message I'd want to give is uh, focus on the benefits and focus on the people, not the process. The Good Practice team asked me to come and present today because of some of the work I've done recently with our strategic leadership team. So our chief executive, our directors and our heads of departments to look at um, project management and why we don't necessarily deliver the best that we can from our projects. By getting the management team to actually open up and be honest with us meant they've actually reflected back the values that we have as, as an organisation about being open and honest and, and trusting each other to share information. And I think one of the things they did identify was around attitudes and behaviours and living our values. So that by them actually appreciating that themselves and they are now challenging themselves to challenge each other if they don't live those values. So I think that's really sort of got home to them now what they need to do to move forward and then to set that example and to lead by example in terms of their team so they will all start behaving in the way that as an authority that's what we want. Well one thing we at the Project Management Institute have seen not just in Wales, not just in the UK but across the world is that the dominant media coverage of project management is a kind of around failure and the fact that projects are always failing. And that's not true. If you look at the research, the majority of projects are successful. And we wanted to both celebrate that success and pull out the five or six factors that contributed to project success um, in Wales and in the UK generally. The one key theme I would pull out of our research is the centrality of people to good project management. When you look at the people element in project management, I think you're looking at the softer skills, um, the skills around conflict resolution, around stakeholder management. So while project management methodologies are important, it is the people that are implementing those methodologies and the softer skills they have that are really important at the end of the day. The main thrust of the, my presentation this morning 
was that you can make change in complex organisations. You often will not require a project manager pro management, strict project management approach to that, but you have to trust and empower the staff within that organisation to deliver for you. The one key message I would want delegates to take from um, the session today is that you need to be passionate about the project that you leave it, lead in and that you need to trust and empower the staff within the system. The main thrust of my presentation this morning was to talk about servant leadership and how we apply that within um, IT projects in an agile environment and how servant leaders would be a change to standard autocratic leadership styles um, turning the whole thing upside down really and being supportive and allowing the people doing the work to design, to design the way the work is done and manage the work and the leaders to ensure that they can do that and provide those environments for them. The one key message I'd want delegates to take from my presentation today would be that they can change the system and that they are they should be empowered to change the system. They should allow people that work for them to be empowered to change their system. And we should reverse the way that the hierarchy works so that the, the, the people at the bottom are the most important people and they're the people at the top. They're the ones delivering value to our organisations. They're the ones that are contributing the most. And we should be clearing everything out of the way to make their life and their work as, as fun and engaging and valuable as possible.